Okay, second video I need to make tonight to stem the tide of messages of people talk, um, talking to me about this. And this is going to have to be off the cuff because I have other stuff I need to do before I go to bed. But anyway, okay. Uh, people have been messaging me about Chris Chan's return to YouTube. Yep, he's got a apparently a new channel with a new video up. And... Um, I join in what is apparently becoming a very common concern, which is that this video he has put up has higher production values than what Chris himself could reasonably pull off. Apparently he said something at some point about taking some kind of video course or something, so that could have something to do with it. But whatever the case, <clears throat> it likely means that somebody is working with Chris Chan behind the scenes. And that is not good, because whoever is working with Chris Chan behind the scenes is either enabling him or exploiting him, or both. And so, no, good, no possible good could come of this. What, uh, the only possible good that can come from Chris Chan is for Chris Chan to be off the internet for good, heavily medicated, heavily counseled, and spending most of his time planting trees and serving the commonweal. And uh, that is obviously the polar opposite of what's happened to add, uh, to, to make matters worse, he has, um, to, to make matters worse, uh, he has apparently moved back into the Sonichu Temple, which is the, the, um, internet name for his his home in um, Rutgersville, Virginia. I'm not going to say the actual location, the actual address. Uh, not that it's uh, uncommon knowledge at this point. But anyway, so that is concerning and uh, it but it most I would hope I would sincerely hope 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 that it means that Barb is out of uh, the Sonichu Temple, or is out of the house, that she's been put somewhere. So maybe, you know, that's that's at least, hopefully that's at least one thing, that maybe Barb's been put in a home or something like that. Uh, that at least needs to happen. Um, apparently the Weens have figured out what, um, have figured out what group home Chris Chan is or was living in, which is which was inevitable but unfortunate because now they'll start pestering those people. And so there's a lot going on we don't know. But what I will say is this. Even if Chris Chan did take some kind of video editing course or something like that, which, uh, again, you know, Chris has a way, uh, his own way of representing things. It's kind of like when, uh, when he mentioned in one of his letters that he was... Um, that court was adjourned so that he could be properly educated on courtroom procedure or something, or that that uh, they, the uh, the court date was postponed so that he could be properly educated on courtroom procedure. Uh, courtroom procedure doesn't require a lot of education. They tell you every what you need to do every step of the way. Uh, but really what that was, I'm sure, you know, we all kind of understood that really what that was, was Chris was probably acting like an idiot in court and they needed to give him a timeout, that kind of thing. So him taking a video editing, a video or videography course or whatever he said could be, could mean any number of things. It could mean that somebody just showed him some tricks or something like that. Uh, showed him some tricks and after effects or something like that. But anyway, uh, you know, the the real thing though is looking at the video um it's completely incomprehensible it is bonkers absolutely bonkers from start to finish uh to quote the famous um you know uh the or to borrow a phrase from the famous quote from Billy Madison at no point was there anything that could be considered a rational thought i mean it is i it it's i can make out i watched it I can understand the words he's saying, but there at ninety eight percent of the time I cannot tell what point he's trying to make with the words he's using. So he's literally just sitting there talking in word salads, and the fact that he is 
he seems to be too um too deranged if you will to even talk coherently to the camera is uh seems like an indication that he's non -fun you know he's ba barely functioning if at all and that his um the the uh the people uh whoever's working with him behind the scenes is probably working you know probably coordinating all of this because whatever you know that whatever editing was done like the green screen was obviously a little too well done for it to have been done by Chris and that kind of thing whatever editing was done could not have been done by someone that is babbling and incoherent like that uh that that is not the even that was not even the behavior of someone trying to be silly and eccentric. That was the behavior of someone that's completely lost touch with reality, which we all knew was the case. A number of you are uh, have asked me if I'm going to do Nowhere Land Part 2. Uh, if you don't know, Nowhere Land was my Chris Chan concept album. It's available on all major streaming platforms. But anyway... Uh, people have asked me if I'm going to do Nowhere Land Part 2. Uh, the simple answer is if there is ever anything, uh, any any progression of events with Chris Chan that is so uh, dramatic, uh, so dramatic and so capturing of the imagination as to inspire something like that, then yeah, I'd certainly consider it. And, you know, if I feel motivated to do it, I, I would. But as it stands, you know, when I did the first Nowhere Land album, I was, uh, or just Nowhere Land, um, it's the only one now, right now, but anyway, when I did Nowhere Land, I was drawing on 20 years worth of Christery, um, right now, it's, it's difficult right now to watch the slow-moving train wreck that is Chris, just because I had kind of, in my own mind, psychologically, after him being in prison for two years, I had kind of just, um, you know, written it off and, and, and in my mind just kind of stopped directly following Christory and thinking, well, that'll be the end of it. So it's it's one of the right now it feels like one of those things where they're uh relaunching, rebooting an old series or an old franchise that I loved back in the day, but you know, don't want to don't care about the reboot at this point because as far as I'm concerned, the original story ended where it needed to end. That's what it feels like, you know. It's like we we don't need uh, five more Indiana Joneses because the original trilogy ended where it needed to end. It ended perfectly as is. You know, the same thing. The Chris Chan saga was supposed to end with him being locked up in a mental inst in jail or in a mental institution for the rest of his life. Cut print. And now the series has been rebooted. So that's where it stands.